Well, good evening, guys. Thank you so much for joining us in our final installment of one of our youth ministry video series for a while. Um, we've been doing this now for about 12 weeks, um, and that has been so encouraging uh, not only to study um, with our youth ministries, um, but to study with you as well. Um, it's been tremendous and a huge opportunity um, for us to study together. You know, this all began when life was really, really chaotic, and uh, life still seems pretty chaotic. Uh, but our first series was um, in the midst of chaos, and we looked at how God continues um, to bring forth His will even in the midst of chaos. Um, then we had our Home Alone series um, with T.J. Kirk, Matt Cook, and David Shannon. And that was a great series, learning lessons from isolation. And tonight, and then our final installment, um, we are ending our Feed Me series. I mean, I'm so excited to study with you tonight on this important topic and our last spiritual habit or principle or discipline um, in this series. And tonight, our lesson concludes with thinking about a spiritual practice that is not talked about very often. Uh, it's a spiritual practice um, that I even think is kind of odd, and maybe you do too. Um, and a lot of that is just from the culture that I've grown up in. Um, and one of the most prolific um, sections of Scripture that talks about fasting um, really is kind of difficult and negative in some ways, and we'll look at that in a few minutes as well. Um, but if you haven't guessed it yet and you haven't read the title, um, we're talking about fasting tonight. This will be our last lesson in this series of Feed Me. And fasting is one of those things that I haven't really thought that much about. Um, it's one of those things that growing up I definitely didn't think very much about. If I had to guess, you probably haven't heard very many lessons on fasting. I could be wrong on this, and I hope that I am, but the chances are is that you've not heard that many lessons about this spiritual discipline of fasting. Do you know anyone that fasts regularly? Maybe even fewer of you know that, and we'll even learn why, maybe in a little bit, why you may know very, very few people, even those who may fast. But fasting is odd. It is an odd thing not to eat. Can I just get an amen for a moment? Um, it is an odd thing not to eat. I can't spend two hours without thinking about the next time that I'm going to eat or thinking about the next time I'm going to get ice cream, which is one of my favorite foods. Or for me right now, it's the Culver's Lemon Ice Cooler. Um, they're seasonal. They just came out last week again for the summer. So public service announcement for you guys. Um, but yeah, we always are thinking about eating, or at least I am. But fasting involves not eating, and it involves doing that on purpose, which is just so strange. But we're going to look at a couple of passages of Scripture and really just do an introduction tonight that I hope gets you thinking more about fasting. I think it's funny to think about how little I've heard about fasting and then to look in preparation for this lesson how many times fasting is talked about in the New and Old Testament. Almost 80 references in the Bible are to fasting. That's a lot. Uh, it actually really is a little bit more than how many references there are to baptism. And that doesn't necessarily make it more important than any other thing, but it is talked about quite a bit. And for some reason, it's not something that we think about or talk about very often at all. You see, most of the lessons that I've ever heard on fasting are not about how to fast or um, even as Jesus will say in a few moments, when you fast. But most of the lessons I've ever heard about fasting focus on one thing, and that's that we're not necessarily directly commanded to fast. And that's kind of difficult for me because it's something that those in the New Testament and in the Old Testament, God really encouraged to fast. It was a spiritual practice that was continued on for centuries. It was something that we see many examples of in the New Testament church. They fasted. And it's an odd thing for us because in our current church culture, it's not something that we really do very often. 
I want to talk about fasting itself. Like, what exactly is it? And for me, um, growing up, I really just thought the only thing about fasting is that you don't eat. Okay, so that was pretty much it. I didn't really have an interest in not eating, and so kind of cruised right on by that uh, when I was a lot younger. But I thought it was something that you just did during Bible times, and fasting isn't something we really should do now. But fasting is not only something that I think is good for us to do, I think it's something that Jesus encourages us to do. And I would encourage you, even following this lesson, to continue to study fasting in the Bible, to look at the many um, spiritual blessings that can come from fasting, and we'll highlight a couple of those tonight, but also to seek guidance in this as well. Um, it's not safe for everybody to fast, uh, depending on um, your health and various medical um, conditions, especially if you're younger, so I want to warn you um, before you would go and do this to definitely talk to an adult um, before you would try to do that. And we'll talk about the tension um, contained in that in Matthew 6 in just a moment here. But fasting is, if you had to finish that sentence, what would you say? Fasting is, for me, for a long time, I would just say not eating. And that's part of it. But I'm going to read a definition here um, from someone who I think really encapsulates what the root of fasting is. And this is by a guy named Donald Whitney. Uh, he has a great book on spiritual disciplines I'd encourage you to check out. But he says that fasting is a believer's voluntary abstinence from food for a spiritual purpose. A believer's voluntary abstinence from food for a spiritual purpose. You see, from my study, I really came to like this definition. Because can I tell you something tonight? Fasting is not about not eating. Is that part of it? Yes, but fasting is not about not eating. Let's look at a couple of passages together, and there's so many more that I'd like to talk with you tonight, but we're just going to get in uh, we're just going to dip our toes into this topic tonight, and I encourage you to continue to study, especially if you check out um, some of the discussion questions and following um, this lesson tonight. Continue to look up more information about fasting in the Bible. But let's look at Matthew chapter 4, and I want to set the scene here for a moment. This is the beginning of Jesus' ministry, um, and John the baptizer in this beautiful image here, right before John, uh, Matthew chapter 4, we see the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit physically present in this moment. And that's when Jesus is baptized. And it is a beautiful image, a beautiful, powerful image here. But the moment after this is over, Jesus is led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And he does something interesting here. I want to ask you a question. If you were going into battle tomorrow or maybe even a month from now, if you were told there was something that was coming, how would you prepare? How would you prepare? If you look anything uh, like me, um, I would probably start lifting some weights, um, trying to put a little bit of weight on. Uh, I would start training daily. There's a lot of things that I would do to prepare for a battle. Do you know what Jesus does to prepare for this intense spiritual battle with the devil. Look what he does here. Let's start reading um, in Matthew chapter 4. It says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. What did Jesus do to prepare for this battle? Um, he fasted. Not only did he fast, but he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. If you leave this lesson tonight and you look into your heart to fast at some point, can I encourage you to really think long and hard before you decide to do it for 40 days? I think something amazing and miraculous happened to Jesus for him to be able to do this for 40 days. I don't think I could do that at all. But that's exactly what he did. He fasted. And I love the humor here in verse 2 when it says, After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. 
You think so? Absolutely he was hungry. But that's how Jesus chooses to prepare for this spiritual battle with the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And if you continue to read, you can see how Jesus goes back and forth with Satan here. And Jesus continues to respond in the godly way, resisting the sins and even coming back at the devil with scripture. But Jesus fasted. Have you ever considered that you can feed yourself spiritually in an amazing way without eating any amount of food? That's what happens when you fast. And it's, there's more intentionality that has to happen than that. But you can have a spiritual feast when you choose not to eat food and you intentionally fast with Jesus in the way that Jesus fasts. See, fasting is not just about not eating. Let's look in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6. And in verse 16 it says, And when you fast, this is Jesus speaking, Do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. You see, evidently there were some people who were fasting and they were choosing to make themselves look gloomy and like they weren't eating in order to bring praise to themselves. But Jesus encourages them that when you are fasting, don't make a show of it. Your Father in heaven knows that you are fasting, that you're seeking Him during this time. Don't tell other people to bring attention to yourself. For the one who it truly matters that they know, and that is God, will know these things. And you see, it's difficult thinking about this because it's hard to even think of what that would look like. For me to start skipping meals, people would notice it, right? So I'd encourage you, if you did choose to fast, you, it's okay, I think, to talk to your parents about this, to say, I'm looking at doing this, and let them assist you in this. There's also examples in the Bible of communal fasting, where a group of people would fast. Maybe this conversation would spur an opportunity with your family as a whole to intentionally abstain from food, and as our definition tonight said, for a spiritual purpose. You see, the problem with these people here in Matthew chapter 6 that Jesus was accusing is that their motive for their fasting was not connected to God, but it was connected to their own self-righteousness and what they wanted others to see in them. You see, our motive, our spiritual purpose for why we are fasting is what's extremely important, to make sure that our heart is kept in check. And it's difficult sometimes with really all of the spiritual practices that we've talked about in this whole series to keep the right motives in these moments, not to brag or feel righteous for how much you pray, how often you pray, How many hours a week you spend reading your Bible, it's difficult not to feel prideful about those things. But when we're truly doing those things for the right motive, that's when we're truly doing what God wants us to do. Not to please man, but to grow closer to Him, to have a spiritual intentionality behind what we are doing, to be fed spiritually. It's about our motives. Fasting is not a diet. Fasting is not something about losing weight. Fasting is something where when we abstain from food, we are choosing to focus on something else. We allow our hunger to drive us to our focus on God. We allow it to encourage our prayer life. We allow it to allow us to seek repentance and to humble ourselves. There's so many ways that you can see in Scripture how fasting is used for a spiritual purpose. And there's so much more we could say about this tonight. But if there's anything that I could leave you with tonight, it is this. Fasting is a different spiritual habit than what many of us are used to, than what I'm used to. But I'd encourage you tonight 
to continue to look into fasting as a way that you can feed yourself spiritually. And I'd encourage you to revisit all of the spiritual disciplines that we've looked at together and look at the many more that we can see in Scripture where we can serve God and also grow in our relationship with Him. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and in this whole series. May God bless you as you continue to feed yourself spiritually and grow into the image of His Son.